Ken Follett's latest doorstop novel details how the president of the US, a Chinese spy, and Western spies in North Africa manage events leading up to a nuclear war between the US and China. I listened to the audiobook narrated An Atomic What If Ken Follett Never Reviewed. Ken Follett's latest doorstop novel details how the president of the US, a Chinese spy, and Western spies in North Africa manage events leading up to a nuclear war. Into the audiobook, narrated extremely well um, by the same actor who did probably my favourite of Ken's trashy novels, Hammer of Eden. In summary, the book is an extremely good what-if um, of how America and China might end up going to war. I hope it's going to be the start of more new Cold War literature. Um, Follett uh, writes extremely well, and I think he treats all nations very fairly and doesn't sort of lapse into... Uh, kind of orientalist or insidious Fu Manchu stereotypes when portraying the Chinese. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how this genre grows and credit to Follett for getting in there early. I think now that the cat's out of the bag that China's not interested in consuming foreign culture, we'll probably get more uh, literature and programming along these sort of Cold War lines. Um, so there'll be more kind of Hunt for Red October, Tinker Tailor, Netflix would be my top contender for the first um, organisation to produce uh, a really heavy hitting, possibly even anti-China uh, programme because they are completely banned in China. And I actually feel like there's an appetite among Western audiences for something really sort of openly hostile um, to the CCP. Anyway, Ken is not like that and has actually given a really well-balanced um, novel, I think, in displaying both sides. And he's kind of thrown down the gauntlet for this new China-US genre. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Anyway, the strengths of the novel. It's just dripping in really good research. He's obviously got his researchers out and they've found out all these fascinating details like the nuclear bunker that the US president would go to in the event of a war. Uh, just minor details of the running of the White House, um, clever things like the nature of Chinese society, um, set it obviously in an authoritarian regime, and the interactions between people such as the uh, Chinese spy Kai's wife, uh, his enemies within the Guoanbu get to him by pressurising his wife classic um, tactic within an authoritarian regime. It's also extremely strong on its female characters. The lead, the US president, is a woman. Uh, one of the main spies in Africa is a woman. One of the main characters in Africa who has to, who's looking to seek a better life in Europe trekking from Chad across the Sahara is a woman, strong females uh, throughout. Uh, really enjoyed that. And it ties into Follett's other great strength, not just in this novel, but as a writer as a whole, his romance and the romantic elements. So what could have been quite a sort of hard-edged political thriller with not much space for romance 
Follett is skillful enough to both get the geopolitics element and the family side of things for all the characters involved. And that is just a credit to the skill of his writing. I think questions over weaknesses. One plot line, particularly in North Africa, it sort of feels like it fizzles into nothing in that the spies in Africa and the woman who crosses the Sahara, that storyline doesn't really tie into the ultimate US-China nuclear war um, plot line. Um, and it feels like it's slightly drawn out in that Africa section, although it's again very well researched on how would someone leave Chad to get to Europe to work. Um, but I think the point of this section is while you've got US and China having this great rivalry, it's sort of celebrating the richness of the human experience, the romance, both storylines set in Africa end up with characters falling in love, um, and also sort of the, the sort of irony, the tension of it all is, wow, we've got some incredibly poor people living in Chad, um, can't we kind of fix those problems when the two superpowers are trying to go to war over the nuclear stuff when there are far more important things to be getting on with and it, it's sort of highlighting both the kind of fruitlessness of existence um, and yet also celebrating the importance of human to human relationships so I think while some people say that middle section set in Africa might not be relevant or they feel short-changed by it I think the point is one of what we call parataxis um, whereas the great leaders are obsessed about this war and uh, sort of the honour of their own nations you've got billions of people out there just wanting to get by and lead decent lives so it's a nice contrast finally I would say it's just a very plausible scenario in his preface Ken Follett talks about how he did some research into World War One for an earlier novel and how the protagonists there in that situation were all doing taking logical steps sensible reasons for their actions but it still ended up in war and this is that scenario both the US and China take <coughs> predominantly logical sensible decisions but it just escalates and the kind of retaliatory nature means that things spin out of control and both sides not really understanding the, uh, the each other and the nature of national pride coming in and I think it yeah it sits just this side of plausible that it could happen Follett's flashpoint for the novel is North Korea not actually Taiwan which is a interesting um, twist and I, I think the way North Korea works in the novel serves as a sort of microcosm of what happens with China in the end. Don't want to plot spoil, um, but it involves in North Korea the idea of the main regime splitting up and a general taking over the nuclear codes in that country. So overall I would recommend this book and it's great fun to see Ken Follett still got what it takes when it comes to writing a contemporary thriller. He's written some really excellent historical novels and you could argue that that was his uh, forte. But let's not forget it all began with Follett writing some great thrillers 
and he's still got it. He's 72, 73 this year, and just love to say, Ken, we love you, great novel, um, keep them coming.